Hey, what's going on AP guys? We have the election of 1844 for you today. One of the more important elections in U.S. history with significant ramifications for our country. So let's get going. All right, some background info. John Tyler, who is the incumbent president or the sitting president, began his presidency as a Wigan name, but really he was a Democrat by ideology. He just disliked Andrew Jackson personally. He is not running for re-election for the Democrats or for anyone for that matter. Here is John Tyler. He was our 10th president. Quick side note, the only president to not have his death recognized by the United States of America. And the reason why was he favored the South during the Civil War. So his death was not recognized by Washington, D.C. Manifest destiny is taking over the nation. And again, this is the belief that it is America's God-given right to expand from coast to coast. So this is in full swing in 1844. Many Americans in the United States want Texas to join the Union. And if you're looking for a very cool video, a, a good song to help you out with the election of 1844, check out a band by the name of They Might Be Giants. Their song, James K. Polk. It's all about our 11th president. All right, so let's talk about the candidates. The Democratic candidate, uh, after many, many candidates tried to vie for the Democratic nomination, um, after many ballots, we have a dark horse candidate, James K. Polk, and he is called Young Hickory because he is good buddies with Andrew Jackson. You see this word dark horse. What this means is that he essentially came out of nowhere, that nobody thought going into the Democratic nomination that he would actually win. So he is America's first dark horse candidate, and he actively favored U.S. expansion. And there is Young Hickory, James K. Polk. So he was fully in favor of Manifest Destiny. The Whig candidate for the third time is going to be Henry Clay. And most Americans, including Clay, thought that he would end up winning the election in a landslide. So he's like, woohoo, I'm finally going to be president. No, too soon. You guys hope up too soon. Sadly for him, he does not become president, as we'll see. So the issues. Well, I talked about Manifest Destiny. Again, it is the belief that it was America's God-given right to expand from coast to coast. This is sweeping the nation in the 1840s and the 1850s. This is a very famous painting that depicts manifest destiny and you see that a lot of people are moving to the left or to the west of the country here and you see an angel and that depicts that it is god who is kind of blessing this and you see trains in the background kind of stoker wagons farmers here in the in the forefront you see native americans are kind of being pushed and they're looking behind their over their shoulders at what's happening we also have Texas, and many Americans wanted Texas to join the Union. And, and Texas in the 1840s was its own independent country, its own republic. It declared independence in the 1830s. Many Americans favored the addition of Texas, but some were apprehensive about it, including Henry Clay, because they were afraid of what it could do to the slavery issue. And Polk absolutely favored Texas. He was not shy about it. He favored the annexation of Texas. And for Henry Clay, he flip-flopped on the issue of Texas. He came out and said he was not in favor of it. Then he said he was, and that really kind of hurt him. Uh, slavery is always going to be in the forefront in antebellum America or pre-Civil War America. And with Manifest Destiny in Texas, slavery was always in the forefront because the question is, with this new land that the U.S. is going to require, uh, would that become slave or free land? And then tariffs are an issue, and Polk advocated and campaigned on lowering the tariff rates. And remember, he is a Democrat, the DN Democrat, means that they want to see tariff rates go down. So Democrats down. Democrats down. Remember that. All right, so the results and impact. Polk defeats Clay 170 to 105. As a lame duck president, meaning a president who is not going to be reelected, re so he has that like about a five month time period at that time before he is out of office, John Tyler pushes for the annexation of Texas. Because James K. Polk won and was a Democrat, and he actively campaigned on the annexation of Texas, John Tyler. Um, decided to push that through, and he saw that as a mandate or a right for him to do it since the election, since Polk won the election. America completes manifest destiny under James K. Polk's administration. You see them gain the Oregon Territory and also the Mexican Cession, which comes about as a result of the Mexican-American War. Here is the Mexican Cession over here in the southwestern part of the U.S., and then up in the northwestern part is the Oregon Territory or the Oregon Country that the U.S. gained. So as a result of Polk's presidency, the U.S. goes all the way from the east here in the Atlantic Ocean over to the west in the Pacific. The only part of the continental U.S. that is not 
settled during Polk's administration is this little piece right down here, and that's called the Gadsden Purchase, which happens in the 1850s. All right, that's everything you need to know about the election of 1844. Thank you very much for watching. If you could take a moment and subscribe to my channel, and if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below, and I will be happy to answer them. And um, let me know, do you think Henry Clay looks like he could be a person from Dr. Seuss's Whoville? I say yes, but let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, guys.